Greetings and welcome to Crafted Conversations, a program sponsored by the Portland Area School District here on CPHS 6 with the thought of giving you some information about things that are happening in our town and introducing you to some people you might not have met before. Joining me today is Sean Starkey. Hi, Sean. Hi, Ken. And Sean works for St. Clair County Community College. But, Sean, as I mentioned, I'm not even going to try to identify what your title is because I know I'd screw it up. So I'm just going to ask you to tell me, what is your title at St. Clair County Community College? Uh, I'm the Executive Director of Public Relations, Marketing, and Legislative Affairs. And so what that means is I handle all of the communications for the college, advertising, and I get to work with people from across the college campus on events and projects because I handle media relations and getting the word out on everything that's going on at the college. Which is kind of how you and I became affiliated because I'm working in the fine arts programs now and we have seen each other on numerous occasions talking right. about events right. that are coming up. Um, you wear a lot of hats at SC4 so you know I just I know as you just went through that it reminds me of my prior job in the Portland Area School District how do you juggle everything? I know it's not something I told you I was going to ask you, but just how do you juggle everything? Um, I, part of it is just prioritizing. Prioritizing, um, having a lot of to-do lists. Um, I have a really great team in my department and they're great staff throughout the college and we just all work together to get everything done that needs to get done. Well, I know you follow up because any time that I've <laughs> talked with you about something, it's like right there, there's a note, we'll get it taken care of and I appreciate that very much. And thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with me today on this television program. I oh, look sure. forward to talking about what's happening at the college. Oh, exactly. I'm happy to be here. Now, I knew your name from some other association in town, and maybe some of the viewers would as well. So what was your background before you came to the college? I actually spent 15 years as a newspaper journalist, and five of those years were at the Times Herald in Port Huron. Okay. I left there in 2005. I was the assistant managing editor in charge of local news. Okay. Were you were you a writer at all? Were you, was your name in the bylines on any articles? Yes, or they may have seen. I used to have a column on the business page. I occasionally wrote stories. Do you didn't write sports or anything, though? I never <laughs> no saw sports. your little face in the corner up there. <laughs> no, on the no, no sports. <laughs> but did they have your face in the picture, too, as well? Um, I used in to fill in on the talk back column every okay. once in a while, so people may have seen my picture there. Well, I knew that I had recognized your name when I heard it at the college, but I thought, this isn't where I know him from. So yeah. I thought maybe the audience at home might like to know that, yeah, your name is familiar, <laughs> but for a different reason, something yeah, else. Yeah. So you've been with the college since 2005? Since 2005, then? so okay. just a little over six years. All right, and you've been doing an awful lot of things there, as we mentioned. So let's talk a little bit about the things that are happening at the college. I know, because I came on board in September, this has been a busy fall, <laughs> and I don't know everything that you've done. Right. I just know the things that you and I are connected by. But what are some of those things? What, what's happened already in the fall at the college, especially uh, in the fine arts department? Sure. Um, a couple of new arts partnerships this fall. Uh, we actually hosted on our campus Studio 1219's Hands-On Arts event. Okay. Um, and that's an event that's been going on in the community for about five years. And so we hosted that for two days on our campus. But has that been, it's been known by other names too, right? Yes, Fire and Ice. Fire and, and Ice. A couple yeah. of other things. Okay. Right. So now it's Hands-On Art. Yes. And it was on the campus. It was on our Don't campus. Don't mean to interrupt you, but I that's just wanted right. to connect for people. Sure. Okay. Um, and we also have a new had a new partnership with the um, Lexington Bach Festival, okay. and their string quartet actually opened our Thursday at noon concert series in September this year. We were very excited about that. Mm -hmm. We just had our Potter's Market um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, that's a great opportunity for people in the community to come on campus and be able to view and buy as potential Christmas gifts um, pottery that's made by students, faculty, and guest potters in the community, and that's been going on for a number of years. We also recently just had our red carpet affair. Um, and we set records this year for that. Um, it's one of our primary fundraising opportunities through the SC4 Foundation. Mm -hmm. And we actually made $45,000. Wow. Exactly. Um, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all to uh, benefit student scholarships. Oh, that's excellent. And we had record attendance. We had 314 people attend this year. Now that's kind of like a uh, roll out the red carpet at Hollywood and that's like a, like a right. grand opening of a, maybe the Oscars or something like that where people right. come in dressed to the nines. And uh, tell me a little bit more about how it's built. What all happens at the red carpet sure. event? It actually, and just what you're describing, the whole red carpet idea of mm -hmm. the Oscars is how it was first started mm -hmm. um, several years ago. Now there's a different theme every year. So in addition to the actual red carpet theme, this year we had, um, it was called Mardi Gras on the red carpet. Okay. So it was a Mardi Gras and jazz theme. 
Um, we had restaurants, uh, we had about 15 restaurants that came in and they donate um, their, their services for the evening. Oh, okay. So they, some of them might offer a dessert, some of them might offer an hors d'oeuvre, um, a little sandwich, something like that. And so you go around to different stations and get to sample what local restaurants and caterers have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, dancing music was provided by the uh, Charlie Stevens Jazz Band. Okay. And then we had um, our jazz extravaganza of mm -hmm. local performers. So we had a couple of local performers that actually auditioned to be part of the event. Mm -hmm. And they sang. And um, the way you win the jazz extravaganza is by how much money you raise. Okay. So um, our, our winner was um, Allie Evenson, mm -hmm. um, who's a student in Port Huron Schools. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, I believe she's 14 and she raised the most money through pledges for the event. Okay. Now I can't tell you exactly how old she is, but I've known Allie Evenson's name. I've seen that in the papers so many times for various things that she's done, and I know both her mom and dad, and we, all of us were associated with Narnia recently from Civic Theater. Oh, sure. So it's, it's amazing how arts names We'll travel in circles, and sure. we get to know each other pretty well. So it was a great evening, though the the red it was carpet event. Great evening, um, terrific decorations for the jazz mm -hmm. theme. Um, I think everybody had a really good time. Excellent. Any other events that have transpired already? We had a sculpture dedication mm -hmm. on campus in October. I was veering um, you back yeah. to that one. <laughs> we had. Uh, we're actually really proud of um, one of our alumni, um, Tom Przerski. Mm -hmm. Um, and he actually is teaching as an adjunct down at Wayne State, and he's an interim director for their arts galleries down there. Uh, he created a sculpture that we commissioned him to do, mm -hmm. and state and local grants provided all the funding for it. It was installed on campus, and it was dedicated outside the Fine Arts Building in October. So if anybody would like to see that, we'll mention that it's in the parking lot. Uh, as you come up to the theater building, there's a traffic circle there, like a little... Right cul-de-sac kind of a thing but in the center is a raised platform where the sculpture stands and we might mention the bioswales just so people yeah. don't wonder what's with all the plants sure there's actually um, a bioswale around the sculpture and we have bioswales on our campus mm -hmm. Um, they actually filter all the rainwater that comes off of our parking lots, and it's a natural solution to filter contaminants out of water before it reaches the Black River. And I really questioned how that would work until the rainstorm the other day. And as I was walking across the parking lot, I literally saw the water going into that lowered ground area where all the plants were, and they were just like in their heaven, you know, soaking up all that water. Right. But the runoff, where you would have contaminants, maybe salt, maybe things from cars, you know, oil and things like exactly. that, get washed off the pavement and go into that just by the natural flow of water. Right. And it's right. an excellent way to keep uh, things out of the system, the ecosystem. Sure. Yeah. And then uh, when Tom, did, when we had the sculpture dedication, Tom also had a show, didn't he, at the Yes, Fine he, Arts he had um, other pieces of his sculpture um, were in our Fine Arts Galleries for several weeks. Mm -hmm. um, there was a special reception for them. And he's actually shown his work um, at the college previously, a mm -hmm. few years ago as well. Okay. We should mention that if anybody comes by to look, it is a very unusual sculpture in that you won't necessarily recognize a man or a woman or a fish or a horse. What you'll see is a kind of an interpretive modern sculpture, and he did identify that he was looking in uh, waves, kind of like the way the, the grasses wave around the sculpture, right. thinking in terms of that, but it's all done with, with uh, recycled materials. It's a very green project, right. and it's very interesting as you, I pass it every day, so every time I look at it, I see something different, right. and it's interesting to see all the component parts and say, well, there, I recognize that thing, but right. then you have to step back and look at the entirety of it and kind of take it as a finished piece as well. Yeah, his, his idea is using all recycled materials that might normally end up in landfills, and he shapes them into a sculpture. Okay. And you mentioned also the Potter's Market. For the viewers at home who are hearing this, I'm going to mention that that takes place sometime in November as we're leading into the Christmas season, because you said about three weeks ago. Right. I have no idea when this show will air. It may right. air in January, so we'll just right. let them know that was sometime in November as well. Sure. So what about things coming up? Uh, we've got, we're in right now coming up to the month of December, mm -hmm. and this may not air until maybe the first week of December for its first showing. It may mm -hmm. air thereafter. What kind of things are planned for the month of December and early January? Sure. We actually have uh, quite a few Christmas concerts that are coming mm -hmm. up that are part of our um, 
holiday events. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got our holiday special, which is part of the Thursday at Noon concert series, and that's going to feature the Grand Rapids Guitar Quartet. Okay. And that's on December 8th, um, starts at noon on Thursday. Um, this is the only one where there's a small fee to get in. The holiday special, there's a $5 admission fee. Um, so that's the first one. The day after that, on the 9th, our SC4 Choir is offering its um, Sounds of the Season concert. Mm -hmm. Um, that's going to be at 7 o'clock in the Fine Arts Theater. And then our SC4 Symphonic Band is having its Holiday Winds and Voices concert. And that's going to be on December 17th, and that's at McMoran Auditorium. Okay. Now, may not air in time for people to know, but there's a play also on the weekend of the 2nd and 3rd, I think? That's correct. It's okay. actually the, um, it's the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the uh, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. It's called Greetings. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a two-act uh, comedy. And um, our theater discipline puts that on, so it features students from the college. Okay, I'm hoping that this will air prior to that event, so that people will know about all of these things. And aside from the noon concert series, uh, noon concert special with the guitarists, which is five dollars, is there a charge for the other events that you know of? There is a small charge for the symphonic band concerts. Okay. Um, it's five dollars for students and seniors and. $7 for adults, mm -hmm. but it's free for any students who are in kindergarten through 12th grade as long as okay. they're accompanied by an adult. Um, and then the charge for the play is $5 and $7 okay. also. So just so that people know, it's, even though it takes place on the community college campus, it's open to the public, and we would love to have you come and see what yes, our students yes are doing. Yes, we would. Yeah. And it's quite amazing, really. Uh, I, I had no idea that all of these things took place at the college until I started working at the college. And it's, <laughs> sure. it's amazing how many things are scheduled within one calendar year. Sure, um, and we have an art show going on right now. That's It's a student art exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, our arts galleries have exhibits running most of the year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they feature guest artists and sometimes they feature student artists. So there's student art going on. And that show, um, which we're calling our invitational show, is going to be going on through January. And there's a reception, I believe, a kickoff reception um, and I think it's the weekend after, a weekend before this will probably air this coming weekend for us, right. December 2nd or 3rd. Yes. Um, but the art will be on display for several weeks? Yes, yeah, so I believe until January 20th. And the galleries are open from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. Now, the campus is closed from December 23rd through January 2nd, okay. so the galleries would be closed then. But there's no charge to come and look at the No charge, art. free admission to the galleries. People can come in and, and wander through and take a look at what the students have created sure. we have and be amazed. We have three galleries as well as a hallway, and they okay. all feature the art. Okay. Then, uh, is that pretty much wrap up our December list? It does. Or? Okay. It does. But then, so we start in January, and, and we look forward from there. <laughs> and so we what, keep going. Yes. What kind of things do you have planned with well, the college? And our the fine arts? Well, our noon concerts continue mm -hmm. um, one Thursday every month mm -hmm. um, through April, and in fact, April there are, there's two noon concerts because there's actually a tapestry student show that okay. happens that closes out the series, and it's a student show of um, music, theater, and dance. Okay. We will continue with the SC4 Symphonic Band. They will have uh, another show in February um, and another show in April. Um, art shows throughout, um, including the Beatrice Thornton Student Art Exhibition, mm -hmm. and that features um, elementary, middle school, and high school artists um, from school districts all over the area. Mm -hmm. um, those run um, in February. I believe we're opening with the elementary school arts, and then in March we're doing uh, middle school mm -hmm. and high, high school. school. So we have two separate shows, basically, elementary right. and secondary, but they are, again, in the fine arts fine building. Fine arts galleries. In, on display, and no charge to come and no see them? No charge to come see those, and those also have special hours. There are some Saturday and Sunday hours for okay. those exhibits as well. And I think there's a reception for each one, too, there a is beginning on, reception. On opening, on the opening night of each so one. So people want to watch for those dates. How will they know when those dates are? Well, you can watch uh, for your, your local newspapers okay. and radio stations. You can also visit our website uh, at www.sc4.edu. We also have a very active Facebook page. You can get to that from our website homepage by going to facebook.com slash follow sc4. Um, and then we also have a brand new, and actually we're just launching it right now, um, a new arts calendar that not only features all the arts events going on on SC Force campus, but it also includes arts events from many organizations in the community. And you can access that online at arts.sc4.edu.
Okay. And I know we have a collaborative effort with a lot of the other uh, organizations in town, Studio 1219, International Symphony Orchestra, Portier and Civic Theater, and some of the other groups as sure. well. I don't want to slight anybody, but I probably would miss somebody. But I know that uh, when we put a calendar like that together, it's with the intent of supporting and promoting the arts and helping people to know what's happening when so that they can come out and see what, what's there. Exactly. We definitely encourage people to support the arts in our community and to come things not to things not only on the SC4 campus, but elsewhere in the community as well. Now, we've, we've talked about um, these things that are have passed and are coming up. I don't know if you mentioned the one that, that I have on my list, uh, as well as the patterns. Did you mention that? Patterns reception um, is on April 22nd this year. Patterns is our literary and arts magazine. It mm -hmm. features student work, both written work and artwork. We're actually the longest continuously published community college literary and arts magazine in Michigan. Um, this will be the 54th year of the publication, and at the reception on the 22nd, we unveil the publication, we honor the students whose work was chosen in it, and then we have guest authors who come in every year, and they'll be doing some readings from their work. I know that's been around for a while, because when I was a student some 40, 40 years ago <laughs> at SC4, one of my teachers said, well, you should submit this to Patterns. And I didn't, but I wish I had, because it might have gone into that, that archival right. element um, of something that had been done at that time. Sure. I was a student, it's no secret, from 69 to 71. Boy, that dates me, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's interesting for me to see how the college has survived, grown, changed, and, and uh, evolved to meet the needs of our community and the students here. It's really, really fascinating and how many fine arts things have come down the pike as well. That's true. How many things have grown. Part of which is, is why I'm associated with the college now. Uh, we're looking at ways that we can reach out to the schools and to the community and invite That's people correct. in. So we really would like to let people know that the college is not just a college. It is a learning center for everybody and uh, definitely a place where the arts can be observed, experienced, and appreciated. So we hope people will take us up on the invitation right. to come and see what's there. Right. And I would be remiss if I did not mention Free College Day. Um, which is one of the major events that we do at SC4 every year. It's on April 14th this year, which is a Saturday. Um, what we do is we offer free classes all day long. You can sign up um, for a different class every hour. And it's enrichment classes in things such as arts, science, local history, cooking, dancing. There really is something for everyone. And we usually get anywhere from 12 to 1,400 people that participate each year. Mm -hmm. um, so we encourage people to come out for that. Um, look for announcements toward the end of March about signing up for those classes. And I know we've, we've agreed to talk basically about the arts today, but there are a lot of things happening on the campus that people should be aware of, like maybe the job markets and things like that, sure. you know, the job fairs. Um, again, you mentioned that you have articles in the Times-Herald on a frequent basis. I will tell you, I've seen every one of them, I think, because, <laughs> but it's funny because they are not big articles. They're usually on the inside column. Sure. So watch for those little narrow columns because that's usually where you'll find out what's happening sure. next at, at St. Clair sure. County Sure, and Community in the College. daily calendars. Mm -hmm. And again, you can visit our website, website. as well. Um, you know, Free College Day is in April, and April, I always point out to people, is the busiest month on SC Force campus. I heard that recently. Yes, it's actually, <laughs> it's, it's National Community College Month, okay. and we definitely take that seriously because in April on our campus, there's a variety of events. We usually have our career fair then, mm -hmm. numerous arts events, there are sporting events going on, there's Free College Day going on, um, different recognition ceremonies for students. So there's a lot going on, especially in April on campus. I think last year there was also a homeless, um, kind of not a fair, but a thing where, where homeless people or people with needs could come and find out where services were available? Sure. Is that probably in the same month? It's um, the Community Resource Fair. That's it. Um, mm -hmm. I I'm, I'm, can't April remember if May, actually, maybe. but it's around that time yeah. of year. Um, it's actually put on by the Community Services Coordinating Body, but SC4 is the host for mm -hmm. it, and it's on our campus. And there are a lot of things that happen on campus that tie the community together. That's correct. So, that's correct. Well, that's, I think, Basically, those are the things that I wanted to ask you about. Is there anything that I neglected or over didn't, uh, I didn't mention? I just want to encourage people um, related to our academic programs. We've talked a lot about the arts programs mm -hmm. and other community events, but um, registration is ongoing for our winter semester. Classes begin January 9th, and you can register by going to sc4.edu slash wave, W-A-V-E, or you can stop into our One Stop Student Services Center on um, Stone Street at Glenwood Avenue. 
We also have related to upcoming classes um, and classes that will be coming up for the fall, um, we have a financial aid night that's on January 3rd. So we start off the year with that. Um, we encourage anybody who's getting ready to come to college to come to that financial aid night regardless of what school you're planning to go to mm -hmm. because um, our financial aid experts will be giving tips about all kind of different aid you can get, grants, scholarships, mm -hmm. and loans. And then we have a College Goal Sunday event, which is on February, and I've got to find it in my notes, um, I believe it's February 12th. And it's always on a Sunday in February, and we actually have staff members from our financial aid office there for a couple of hours, and you can come in and actually get one-on-one -on -one help filling out the free application for federal student aid, mm -hmm. which is the standardized form that all colleges and universities use when awarding scholarships mm -hmm. and that you need to get federal financial aid. Okay. Um, I also know that uh, we encourage people to look at St. Clair County Community College as their first college. And if you are not of a mindset to be able to go away, or if you're of a mindset to make it more affordable, or if you uh, need to look at some, some local programming to get you started, or maybe you're not quite ready for that transition, please give us a consideration because that's really yes. what we're all about is helping people get to college. And we have the Know to Go program, Know How to Go, that's and correct. a number of other things. So we really want people to take a second look and come and visit us and see what we're all about. That's right. Okay. Lots of things going on. And uh, I probably should let you get back to your office. <laughs> people are probably looking for you. But thank you very much <laughs> Thanks, for being my Ken. guest today and talking to us about the fine arts programs and other things happening at St. Clair County Community College. Thanks. Sean Starkey. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we appreciate you tuning in to this and other programs here on CPHS 6 to learn more about the Portland Area School District and what's happening in our community. Thanks for watching. Good night.